disclosure of the government's activities. And for that, they took away $100,000 from him in a civil suit. Even though it was even unclassified. Even said. though it was unclassified yeah. and there were no secrets involved. And now a broader range of government employees is under these restrictions. Oh, yeah, the Morrison, the, the criminal case against Morrison, uh, who leaked some information to Jane's uh, weapon systems, they're going after this guy under the espionage law. And if they get this, if President Reagan gets this, Anybody who talks to the press in Washington could be jailed for, for espionage. Another one is the Phil A.G. passport ruling, in which the Supreme Court supported the State Department. The Secretary of State now has the authority to take away any American citizen's passport without a hearing. It means that in the next war, a Jane Fonda going to Hanoi, uh, a Cy Hirsch covering My Lai, they'll just lose their passport and My Lai won't be exposed. Another uh, law that they're putting together, which is as ominous as you can get, is this preemptive strikes against terrorists. Secretary Schultz is, is defending this thing, saying, yes, it will be necessary to take action on the basis of information that would never stand up in court, and yes, innocent people will be heard in the process. This bill also provides for the Secretary of State to put together a list of terrorists, of suspected terrorists, of terrorist supporters. Just on his own word. Nobody and if else your name or your organization is on the list, you would not be permitted to go to court and challenge it and have your name taken off the list. So the Secretary of State pins your name on his list, and legally they can kick in your door and kill you. But they've got the teams put together. Um, mm -hmm. to do the preemptive striking, international SWAT teams. The State Department and all have actually said who they claim in the United States are some of these terrorists. This includes people who are supportive of the freeze, mm -hmm. people who mm -hmm. are against nuclear power plants, mm -hmm. CSPIS, this lobby group people on who America. Write, people who support the refugees uh, coming up from El Salvador, anybody who is supportive as, who is non-supportive of the administration view of Central America, that's millions of people. Another one is the NERP, the National Emergency Reaction Plan that Reagan started working on shortly after he put, you know, set people up, streamlining the National Guard, the National Guard Command, so it can be called out more quickly in times of civil disorder, a la Kent State. Mm -hmm. And then there's FEMA. There's a lot of laws, and you know, you can sort out 15, you can sort out others. That includes uh, executive orders, too? Right. right. Yeah, Our executive office. orders is one way of coming up with a law. Uh, bills passed through Congress is another way. Uh, uh, Supreme Court decisions, another way. And all these things are happening. And then just the policy. Frank Wilkinson, who was jailed for a year for refusing to cooperate with the House and American Activities Committee, he tells us about a shocking threat to our civil liberties. Preventive detention wipes out the foundation of the whole criminal justice system in our country, which is based upon the concept of the presumption of innocence. In America, when you're charged with a crime, you're presumed innocent until the jury has found you guilty. For that reason, our Eighth Amendment gives you bail so you can defend yourself. Judges will uh, deny bail in certain capital cases, possibly, or in cases where there's reason to believe a flight from the jurisdiction. But generally, you get bail. All right, Kennedy's bail provides that an arresting police officer or FBI agent on a non-capital, not even an injury case, but it could be any one of a, of a number of what I call uh, a civil disobedience type of statutes, or recidivists who constantly protest nuclear power plants or, or civil rights actions, let me get is arrested and uh, the arresting judge arresting officer takes you before the judge for arraignment and says to the judge uh, your honor uh, I ask that you deny bail this man or this woman is dangerous that's the only word used at that point under Kennedy's bill the judge locks you up for five days while you prove that you're not dangerous and how do you prove you're not dangerous if you're already locked up, allegedly, on suspicion of violating some law? After five days, uh, based on hearsay evidence that would never be accepted in a court of law, the judge then can deny you bail, and you're locked up. You, you, 
you're locked up pending trial. It's an Alice in Wonderland type of justice where the Queen of Hearts said, uh, sentence now, trial later, whatever that was, you know, in the Lewis Hart book. And that is happening. Now, that is law now. And the horrible irony is that it's to be compared with something that's going on to uphold apartheid in South Africa. These seem to be pretty serious things. Now, you have a historical perspective of what the United States has done in the Civil yeah. War and World War I, World War II. How does this stack up with things that have happened in the past? Uh, it pales everything else. It's beyond everything else. Uh, if, if we go back to what American school children still hear about as an unfortunate thing in American history that was corrected, <laughs> You know, and so that everything is okay ever since. The third Alien Act of July 1798 provided that the President of the United States, in the event of a declared war, and the war would have been declared against France, the President then could arrest, imprison, and banish aliens from the homeland of the country with which the United States was making war. Okay, it had to be war, war declared, and the abuse, the disregard of the rights of aliens only from the country in belligerency. And it was never invoked. Nobody was touched by that action because of a storm of protest. Now, Henry Gonzalez said that if there is a formal declaration of law, all of, of these acts, of, of, yeah, of, of war, that all of these acts, like the 1918 Sedition Act, and the Espionage Act of 1917, they would automatically come back into effect. I think he's in error. Uh, there were four major laws made during World War I. The two you mentioned, and then one called the Sabotage Act, which made it a, a, war, a crime against the war interests of the United States to stop working, which is to say, to participate in the strike. Right. And then there was a, a fourth, final, sweeping alien act, in which not just Germans, but any aliens could be put in jail if they were suspect, and chiefly suspect of anarchism. Hmm. Now, I don't think those laws can be re-invoked. They weren't in World War II. That's why the Smith Act was written. But what we have here is a record of, of preparing for war by preparing to make a kind of war against our own people. In the U.S. Constitution, every alien has every protection that we citizens have. And these laws suspended that, and those laws have been held constitutional. And this FEMA stuff isn't just against aliens, it's against everybody. Anybody. Now, if you go down to the Smith Act of 1940, the Alien Registration Act, no time of war, all right? It's because of a situation in which war may become likely. Any alien of any nationality can be detained or deported for any suspicious action to the safety of the United States. That's, that's getting more extreme, but at least the context is war is likely. Now we have, and, and in 1940 there was not a politician in the United States who, when he thought of the word war in connection with the United States, did not assume a congressional debate and a vote to declare war. Now there isn't a politician who, who thinks that any such debate is, is plausible anymore. That's a great, regrettable change. The Emergency Detention Act of 1950, which is part of the so-called McCarran Act, absented the condition of war altogether. Hmm. It was for an emergency to, do, to be declared by the presidency. Uh, those emergencies in, included a declaration of war or invasion or insurrection of the United, in the United States or threat of insurrection in the United States. And then anybody, alien or naturalized, could be uh, incarcerated on suspicion that that person would conspire to commit an act. So it's no overt acts even. And the president could just declare the situation just on his own. He yeah. didn't have to get approval or anything. Yes. Right? The American president vetoed that act, and it passed over his veto. Mm. It has since been repealed in 1971, but for all we know, given the clandestine character of so many operations, 
it's incorporated into this present act for preparing for an emergency. Well, even at that, there was a study made in uh, the early 70s after the act was supposedly repealed, and the concentration camps which they'd set up were still in a caretaker status. And some of those were the ones prepared for the Japanese, 120,000 Japanese Americans who were incarcer incarcerated during World War II. During World War I, there were severe measures, the Espionage Acts and the Sedition Acts, which didn't have anything to do with espionage. They had to do with criticism of the U.S. government. And don't forget that there's plenty of precedent of the government jailing anti-war dissidents. 30,000 people jailed in the Civil War for protesting the war. 6,000 jailed in World War I for protesting the war. Remember Kate Richards O'Hare uh, saying the women of the United States are nothing but brood sows producing sons to be put into the army to be turned into fertilizer. And she was sentenced to five years in jail for anti-war talk. We, we do have to remember in, in all justice and candor that much of the repression which has occurred in this country has been popular. That is, the population has supported it. And it was assured by its government that it was justified and, in fact, uh, necessary for the uh, preservation of American values. And the American people have always rested uneasily with that. They've regretted each Red Scare, at least to some extent. But for a while, it's been popular. And the Constitution is there in part to protect those of us who are going to say something that our countrymen don't want to hear. We're supposed to be able to say it. And these government programs have been designed to crush us if we've tried. And what's at stake is freedom, the freedoms that we have sometimes inaccurately boasted about. Uh, but freedom, the, the system of democracy itself, there are cynical people in the world, including in this country, who are quite happy to take away your freedom if you'll let them do it. And this is what's at stake right now. What the American people must never forget is that when fascism comes to America, it will come wrapped in an American flag. And that's something that I have never forgotten because that's the problem that we face today. And we have to be very open about this. What are we facing? We're facing the road to fascism. And when we understand that, millions and millions of American people We'll stand up and we'll fight for the elementary preservation of the American system of government. And that brings us to the end of this Alternative Views. Frequently hear from viewers who request a list of news publications which we use on Alternative Views and also a reading list for U.S. power structure in the mass media. If you would like to have these, send a stamped, self-addressed envelope to the Alternative Information Network, P.O. Box 7279, Austin, Texas, 78713. You must send a self-addressed stamped envelope. That same address is one which you can use to write us on any subject, as a matter of fact. Alternative Information Network, P.O. Box 7279, Austin, Texas, 78713. Goodbye.